I'd like to first say a big thank you to former President Kufour because I started journalism on the University of Ghana campus as a student. I was 19. And in the first year of my foray into student broadcasting, he repealed the criminal libel law. So it made it easier to learn. When you're learning the ropes in an environment where certain mistakes are not punished by crime, it's a very important step. In 2004, when Samens put me on air to host the City Breakfast Show, I was only 23. And I'm sure, I remember the first time I interviewed a minister, the minister said to Samens, but he's so young. He's so young. And I think that for any industry to thrive, the policies must be right. And I think that was a seminal time in our lives. So I'm very grateful for that. I, I'm also grateful for the people who put the business side of the media together. Because I know that apart from good rules, if it doesn't work economically, it can't pay people's salaries. I studied economics at the University of Ghana. A lot of my mates are lecturers. Some work in banks and they get six salary figures. If Nikamat, if you hadn't started CTFM in 2004, I wouldn't have been employed to do national service there. And I wouldn't have had the chance to show my talent. And I think there are a lot of business owners in media who have not been acknowledged for the hard work they do. In employing, now we have 200 people paying them salaries. For a long time, media was a stepping stone to a job in corporate communications or even politics. These days, media can become a termination point because we can pay competitive salaries and we cannot discuss the excellence of the industry without looking at the business ecosystem that supports the talent. We have many talented broadcasters, many talented writers. A lot of those talents have been lost because we just couldn't sustain employing them. So I want to recognize the business owners who have sometimes suffered losses to keep us employed. But thirdly and finally in that ecosystem, you can have great laws and rules, you can have great businesses, but if there's no professional commitment to excellence, the industry will be destroyed. Which is why I think the Journalist, Journalist of the Year awards are very critical. Journalists are at the heart and at the center of this ecosystem. Professional, ethical journalists. And on a day like this, I think I need to remind myself and my colleagues that our obligation is to the truth. Not to the government, not to the opposition, not to our employers. Our obligation is to our conscience and the truth. As Bob Woodward put it, journalist is a discipline of verification. So if it's not true, it's not news. Some will say truth is an elusive concept because there are many sides to the truth. So he says, put out the best verifiable version of the truth. If you can't verify, don't put it out. The media landscape because of technology, digital media, and profit is now very nuanced. And therefore, there are people who put things out that they've not been able to verify. There's opinion journalism, and there's a lot of skullduggery, all in the name of journalism. And I think one of the most existential threats to press freedom is lack of professional practice. The space we've been given, we should respect the sacrifice of those who give us that space by making sure we only publish the truth. So that if we will use the freedom to fight injustice, it will survive. It doesn't matter how well we are paid. It doesn't matter how many laws are written. If we insist on putting out the truth, we will gain the respect. Because if people stop reading or hearing us, we don't have a future. So on a day like this, I want to urge my colleagues to recommit themselves to truth. Our loyalty is to citizens, not to the businesses who advertise on our radio stations, to citizens, to our country, and to the future of the country. So I want to say very finally that when we go wrong, correct us. Stop calling us stars, because in the era we are in, there's movement away from institutions and structures into celebrity culture. So we convert media people into superstars, one million followers on Facebook. That can corrupt you from staying on the straight and narrow. So we are not celebrities. 
We are privileged professionals accountable to the public working in the public sphere. Very important. So if you admire us, give us good feedback to keep us on the straight and narrow. Help enact laws that will keep our industry strong. Let's fight against policies that will destroy our industry. But very importantly, let's keep the main thing the main thing. The object of what we do is to develop our country and give our children a future. So let's all be united in that quest to make Ghana great. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen.